the the matchup we all been wanting for Hell in the Cell finally gets locked in last night. Who really accepted John Cena's United States Open Challenge last night? And was everybody disappointed with the outcome? Need, needless to say, yours truly was disappointed. You're going to find out exactly what we have to say, ladies and gentlemen, on this week's Monday Night Raw Review, powered by Google Hangouts. YouTube, if you're ready for your hot tag, it is time to warp. <laughs> Hey guys, it's the Insane Machine Cody Hawkins, and you're watching WGS TV. <laughs> Greetings, YouTube. Yeah, I've worked your way into another installment of WGS TV right here on YouTube.com slash Russell Gamer. I am the Russell Gamer, double people the Boudreaux. Today is October 6, 2000. And 15, and what we're going to be talking about today, ladies and gentlemen, is Monday Night Raw. Technically, the fallout from WWE Live and MSG, and what a debacle that show was Saturday. I mean, thank goodness it wasn't technically a pay per view, it was technically a house show with cameras. That's basically what we got Saturday night, and I made, I made that explicitly clear. But anyway, let's get to the Monday Night Raw review, and ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce my 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 uh, my co my guest here uh, today, ladies and gentlemen, from the Five Wrestling Reviews podcast, Curtis Cole. Curtis, good, glad to have you back on. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. How about you, Billy? I'm doing just fine. Let's get right into the review because currently, right now, at the time of this uh, this uh, review, uh, time is limited. So we're just going to get right into it. And with the opening with Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman coming out to basically promo the upcoming Hell in a Cell match with The Undertaker, and timing says it's right, you know, uh, you start the opening of the show with Paul Heyman, basically, uh, Paul Heyman can be, uh, hype up anything, anything that you can think of, you can think of a phone, a broom, a dime, a nail, and he can hype that up into a main event, and, that, and that's one of the things that I love about Paul Heyman, Curtis, he can basically talk up anything and make it sound golden and he did that last night he visited the promo of god he, he, he could say anything like this is like the last match um it's like um i think there's gonna be another undertaker versus brock Lesnar match because it was just like the john cena versus um the rock once a lifetime and it's kind of the final match something like that so basically that's what i was going to think it's going to take place as another match of undertaker versus brock lesnar but but speaking of paul Heyman, like he's brilliant on mic like he's golden like he can do He's golden like there's nothing you can say wrong. He just does it perfectly. Yeah, and, and it's accumulated over years of experience of of uh, working in the industry. And Paul Heyman, like I said, probably one of the best, if not the best talkers on the microphone in the industry today. Um, now, I don't understand the usage, once again, of having Big Show come out there, basically get squashed by Brock Lesnar and a lot of Lesnar fans uh, out there. Go ahead. I think it was a show that... Um, Having Big Show come back out to basically, um, he's basically going to take time off probably, or probably like, um, have him show that The Undertaker, he's ready to have The Undertaker versus Brock Lesnar, uh, uh, sorry, at Hell in a Cell. That's what I'm thinking. Well, let's get to the opening match on Monday Night Raw this week. Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose, and Randy Orton taking on the Wyatt family. Um, one of the things I said on HWR's Raw reaction last night, by the way, the link is in the description box below for that one, is the fact that we haven't seen a really good wild opening match on Monday Night Raw in quite some time. And that's exactly what we got out of Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose, Randy Orton, and the Wyatt family. A good, strong, kind of chaotic style I Man. guess strong, a good. I'd say I'd put it out. Sorry for interrupting, Billy. Um, I'd put it out. Good, strong start, then um, a small finish. Well, like I give it a seven out of ten. I, I I wouldn't necessarily say a small finish per se. It, it kind of makes sense in a way to have Roman Reigns have the finish, uh, basically because you again you, you have to build Roman Reigns versus Bray Wyatt for their Hell in the Cell match. And having Roman Reigns have the finish on Luke Harper the way they did, to me, kind of makes sense. And, and and I still want to ask this question. How is it that whenever Randy Orton hits the RKO, it's always out of nowhere? 
even though we basically when you saw the RKO he hit on Luke Harper, there was about a five second delay before he actually hit it. It's just something it just that comes naturally, man. it just comes naturally. That's all I can say. It comes naturally. Ladies and gentlemen, we finally have a match with Neville without Stardust. Thank you, God. Because I think we've had enough of the boring, worn-out storyline that made no sense whatsoever against Neville and Stardust. Thank you, WWE Creative, for pulling your head out of your butt on this one. Now, I don't really understand the usage of... Because it was kind of odd, per se, if you think about it, with King Barrett there at ringside. Uh, he would, you know, inadvertently. Uh, I, I, I was, go ahead. Um, I think it should be. Um, there's two ways the possibility could go. It could be um, a Way Bear versus Neville storyline again, or it could be um, a Way King Way Bear story versus Sheamus storyline. So it depends on which one they're going at there. Now, did you notice the reaction that Barrett had after Sheamus hit the bro kick? Um, and picked up the win over Neville. It wasn't a look of satisfaction on Barrett's shocked. face. Yeah, it was a look of shock. Like, you know, this wasn't it was something, an outcome that he did not want to happen against Neville. Uh, what do you read into that, Curtis? I mean, what was your reaction when you saw that look on Barrett's face? Like, this was something that he did not want to happen against Neville. Um, maybe shock because Neville had a future ahead of him, probably. Um, like, Wade Barrett probably wanted Neville to have the win, it was supposed to be probably doing Neville, but it went to the Sheamus, because maybe it's, it's really a, It's kind of confusing that I have to put it as. It was a weird, a weird strategy. It, yeah, it, it, it is, it is. Um, because for once, I really don't know what to say, what they're doing with WWE Creative. You know, nine times out of ten in WWE, you can actually kind of tell what WWE Creative is going to do on TV. And when they had Barrett have that reaction that he had um, last night after the match was over, it kind of left me confused. I mean, at first I thought that Barrett was supposed to be healed. And then I thought he was supposed to have like a glorified look on his face, you know, because he actually helped... Uh, Sheamus get the win over Neville, but that wasn't the case. It was actually a look of shock and a look of, oh my god, I screwed up. I didn't yeah. want this to happen. Like a WTF moment. Kind of, in a sense. Now, Corporate Kane would be out there next to uh, kind of announce that since Big Show got taken out once again by uh, Brock Lesnar, that he would be filling in um, Big Show spot in their tag match with uh, Seth Rollins against the Dudley Boys, and Seth Rollins wanted none of that. Which then would bring up Stephanie McMahon to finally make the match official for Hell in the Cell for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. The Demon King taking on Seth Rollins. And he, Stephanie McMahon would also uh, throw in the ad stipulation, which to me adds in more interest into the storyline. Not necessarily needed, but I think I think it's actually a good thing, a step in, in, a, in a positive direction. Um, in a sense, and the fact that if the Demon King doesn't win uh, the WWE World of Weight Championship at mm -hmm. Hell in the Cell, Corporate King gets the boot. He gets fired. Ah. Exactly. I'm liking the, whole, um, the way it's going. I like it in the whole Corporate Kane ver and Mass Kane development. I'm liking that storyline right now. Like, I really don't like the Kane storyline, but I actually like this one. Like, it's going back and forth. Like, Corporate Kane taking out several ones and then. Demon King just coming out. I'm just liking the way it's going, though. That's like in my personal favor. I like it. Right now. One of the, the the many references uh, Rick had, the host of Hardcore Wrestling Radio, and once again, the link to his channel is in the description box below. Rick Head is a a good friend of mine here on WGS TV. He uh, he referenced many times of uh, of the Corporate King Demon King storyline um, as kind of the Incredible Hulk storyline, and in in a sense it. You know, it's kind of a combination of the Incredible Hulk storyline and uh, very, very somewhat similar of the Christopher Park Abyss storyline in TNA. You know, it's kind of a cross-reference between the two. That, like, the Hulk, God, how does it more like Sandman? Mm. Like the Sandman, he's just a person that he turns into the Sandman and stuff? What is that? Um, yeah, I... Yeah, like I said, there are a lot of references and a lot of inferences that a lot that can be made uh, when we talk about the 
the corporate king demon king storyline in wwe but anyway uh, be, uh after that we had natalia versus Paige. somebody tell the bella twins to take notes on how a proper female wrestler wrestling match is supposed to take place what we had out of natalia and Paige was by far one of the best if uh, female wrestling matches we've had in wwe since aj lee left the company earlier in the year i gotta say this is something that i, I like to see curtis more out of the in-ring female talent in wwe good uh, work well worked matches and that's exactly what we got out of Paige and natalia i i think it's a pretty good match it went back and forth and then I forgot who picked up the win. I think it was Paige. It was, not, no, it was Natalia with the sharpshooter. Yeah, I forgot. I, well, I, I didn't keep contact there. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I, I have all my notes in front of me, man, so it's okay. I, I thought it was a pretty good match. Going back and forth, I thought it was a way, way hell of a good match last night. Yeah, I think it was the best match during the last match I ever thought that would do was probably Charlotte versus Paige one on one um, in the next season. Um, up next, we have Kevin Owens and Sin Cara. No, no questions here. Kevin Owens would squash Sin Cara with the pop-up power bomb, and, and just before he could take out Kalisto on the outside with the power bomb against the ring apron, out would come Void back. Oh, I'm sorry, Ryback, and uh, to kind of make the save uh, right there, and thus continuing the storyline between Kevin Owens and Ryback for the Intercontinental Championship. And it was something I said on my uh, my live from MSG review. WWE has been making a lot of good, positive strides as of late when it comes to bringing more relevancy back to their secondary championship, the championships in the company. You know, notice the relevancy that the United States Championship has. It hasn't been more relevant as it has been now uh, since John Cena started holding it. And now they're starting to actively involve the Intercontinental Championship in more and more storylines. That is something that needs to be seen and needs to be done when you have more uh, to bring in more relevancy. Curtis, wouldn't you agree? I totally agree. Like, they should have more Intercontinental storylines instead of having like tag team matches instead of the storyline with the Intercontinental Championship. I think they're doing pretty good. The way they're going right now with the Intercontinental Championship with having Kevin, Kevin Owens hold it, it's doing pretty good. Like, the storyline's going to fit as it is right now. Now, of course, with October being the Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and that's the, the month when WWE partners up with the Susan G. Komen Foundation for a breast cancer research and uh, and a uh, I'm, I'm being told by actually the hardcore host of Hardcore Wrestling Radio, Rick Head, that he'll be joining us in just a few minutes. He has a brand new headset, so uh, he will be joining us in a, just about five minutes here on the review. Uh, now, the reason why I wanted to bring up the Susan G. Komen Foundation promo is the fact that CM Punk on Twitter kind of blasted the Susan G. Komen Foundation saying that the Susan G. Komen Foundation was a scam, that they kept all the money, they never did any actual research, and I, I really don't know how to react to that, Curtis. You know, because, you know, in one hand, it, you know, if you look at it from one perspective, Curtis, it, 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 it depends. Well, you know, CM Punk actually hasn't been a, a, an open book of truth as of late, you know, ever since he left the uh, WWE. Um, would you say that when, you know, looking at some of the things that Punk said on Twitter when it re regard, regarding the Susan G. Komen Foundation, uh, would you kind of say that it's, you know, a little bit of bitterness with CM Punk? I think Sam Punk could be more respectful from all those women that have that survived it. Like, you don't see a lot of people surviving nowadays with cancer. Like, it's really sad. But Sam Punk took it right out and did it. wasn't Sorry for my language. Was an asshole about it. There's no faith. No like, there's no respect towards him right now for that. Uh, now, when it comes to the actual promo in itself, I like the uses of not only John Cena. 
who is your top merchandise seller and a, a lot of the IWC marks out there continue to ignore that fact about WWE who is in a business not only to entertain but to make money kind of let that sink in and I'm pretty sure a lot of the uh, Cena haters who are also my haters and yeah believe it or not Curtis I actually have haters uh <laughs> a lot of their panties are starting to get bunched into a wad right now because of the thing I just said. But uh, I also like the inclusive of Roman Reigns into that because with John Cena technically starting to kind of maybe fade out of the limelight just a bit, they need a new star to kind of step in into his role. And right now, Roman Reigns appears to be that guy that can be just as marketable as John Cena. So I really like the, uh, them including Roman Reigns into that Susan G. Komen uh, Foundation promo. But uh, up next, the, uh, after that, we would have Corbin King and Seth Rollins taking on the Dudley Boys. And we all knew what was going to happen, ladies and gentlemen. It was almost inevitable. They would have to have some reason for Kane, corporate Kane, to get her so that way he can go to the back, he can take off his his, his yeah his corporate stuff, the business suit and everything, because we all know he's wearing his in ring gear underneath everything. Quickly put on the mask and come back out at <laughs> part me as the Demon King, and that's exactly what happened. But uh, before he could do any of that, apparently now we, there's a new rule that you know even though the Dudley boys were holding up the table, if you drop kick it, uh, the table into the Dudley's face, that constitutes a disqualification, and that's exactly how the match would end. And uh, basically, Seth Rollins would get a little wood, no pun intended, as uh, King would end up choke slamming the WWE World Heavyweight Champion through a table, and once again the Demon Kane getting the better. Uh, Seth Rollins, and it, it was kind of inevitable uh, when you think about it, Curtis. I found it a pretty good match. Was going so far. Oh, you want my review of it too? Yeah, yeah. Well, what are your thoughts? Um, I thought it was a pretty good match throughout the match, but then, like I said, the Kane whole thing going on, I love it. Like, it is a story that I like for once, actually. Like, I see where it's leading. I hope Kane actually gets the title for his run because it needs to be his last run, then have him retire with that. But anyways, um, the mat, the Dudley, I mean, I can see them winning the match because like it pushes them towards the new day and builds up their storyline. But it's then it builds up the storyline between Kane and Seth Rollins to go back and forth. You know what I mean? What in the world last night was that garbage between Team Bad and Team Bella? Uh, here is my a couple. That couple of to be honest, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna give my review on it. I just skipped it. Yeah, I, I wish I had that luxury, but unfortunately, I did not. Uh, no, I just, uh, like, I watched it online, I just skipped, I just went back to doing my usual stuff, working my homework, and I just skipped that part. Here's a couple, of, a couple of my major gripes when it pertains to Team Bella versus Team Bad. Um, one, of course, Nikki Bella trying to get, you know, they're in Boston, Mass, and of course, you know, with the, the uh, in, in, um, in the, uh, uh, baseball, you know, their big feud between Boston Red Sox and the New York Yankees. And of course, uh, uh, Bella, uh, Nikki Bella, who uh, I believe is from the Boston area, of course, would have to be try to cut a sort of anti Boston uh, promo, come out with the Yankee hat, and basically get the incredibly cheap way to get heat uh, from the crowd, from the Boston crowd, by wearing a Yankee hat. Um, I don't necess I don't really agree with the the ratchet re reference or, or something to that effect from Nikki Bella describing Team Bad because apparently all over social media uh, a lot of people are getting on WWE's case because a, a lot of people say that kind of it's kind of a racial type of a slur towards um, a Team Bad. And um, one of the things you're truly nice to do, guys and gals, is, um, of course, I like to hang out with my friends on Skype uh, as we kind of discuss Monday Night Raw um, and or wrestling events as they happen. And the Stumbling Man Ashley, again, great friend of the show, 
he literally lost his mind over the usage of the divas especially with the six diva tag match and just how utterly stale the diva revolution is turned into in wwe it was great when it started don't get me wrong it was wonderful when it started but now it is fallen so far from grace it is literally sickening the only good divas match last night guys was Paige versus natalia that six diva tag match was utter garbage i agree 100 percent with the studly man ashley's rage when it pertains to the divas revolution in wwe and in fact let me tell you this curtis we were so, no no let, let me tell you this first we were so disinterested in that six divas and let me tell you who was on the skype call again these are great friends of the show uh rick head lance moss the uh, uh, our friend the paranormal investigator andy and the studly man ashley our topic of conversation during that match curtis was whether or not alicia fox had a boob job alicia fox just get rid of her like she can't she, she's a good athlete like she just can't she needs to show like that somebody needs to improve on the divas like rosa mendes they made her i don't know if they made her but american the smackdown something i don't know what it was but I think the Divas division is going nowhere right now. Like, really, you need to bring back some of the old wrestlers like that know how to do it. Like Lita, bring her back or bring back the Stratus. They know how to do it. I, I don't think they can use Lita again because of neck issues and a bad neck injury, which is one of the things that caused her to retire um, early as she did. You know, and WWE is kind of big on that. And we really don't want to see uh, Amy Dumas, um, a.k.a. Lita, end up in a wheelchair to that extent. Um, the, the finish of the match officially, yes, there was an official finish of the match, and of course, yours truly will bring it to you. Sasha Banks would lock on the bank statement on Alicia Fox to pick up the win for Team Bad. And one of, the, if there's ever been a segment on WWE in its history that has ever made me nauseous as hell, it was Summer Rae's proposal to Rusev. I, when she went down on one knee, Curtis, I literally felt my stomach getting sick. <laughs> Why in the... I'm trying to watch my language. I don't want to lose it in here. But why in the hell did we have to have an utterly sickening segment... Did he even say yes? I forget. He said yes at first, but his complete response was, "Until I get when I get gold." Oh, now. No, what he said is, "When you when I get gold around my waist, is when you will get gold on your finger." That's what Rusev's response was. And every time Summer Rae calls him Ruru, I'm, I'm like. Ah! That's how I feel about this whole Summer Rae Rusev storyline. It is literally that uninteresting. To me, it's like a CM Punk AJ storyline. You know how AJ proposed to CM Punk? It's just like that. But here's here's the difference between the two. I actually were... cared. I actually cared about the AJ Lee CM Punk storyline. How many people can you honestly say right now actually gave a crap about the Rusev Summer Rae storyline? Probably some people. Not a lot, though. You kind of get Maybe my point? Yeah, it was a, it was a horrible storyline. Like, I hate where it's going at. Definitely, definitely. Now, one of the things um, that was, um, again, a big topic of discussion during um, our Skype call last night during Monday Night Raw is who was going to be the person to accept the challenge for the United States Championship Open Challenge Kevin Owens. Well, yeah, that was a lot of people who wanted Kevin Owens to do it. I, I don't think it would have made any sense for Owens to do it. He already holds the Intercontinental Championship. So I, I really don't think that would have made any sense. Um, uh, unless they were trying to unify the secondary titles, and I don't see them doing that anytime soon. Uh, there was Hope also... Not. Yeah, um, 
another uh, as uh, we're being joined right now by the hardcore host of Hardcore Wrestling Radio, Rick Head. Rick, how you doing? As uh, Rick is getting his microphone uh, issues uh, said he is uh, using a brand new headset. Uh, Eric just chime in. Uh, like, who accepted it? I forget. Um... Well, 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 I'll tell you. As we, um, again, I want to lead into that uh, from our discussion um, last night during the the Skype call I had with Rick Head and uh, a lot of the. Uh, as um, I'm being, uh, I'm, I'm, I see you, uh, Rick. I'm, t- I'm responding to you if you can hear me. Um, just um, I, I can see you right now in the the hangout. Just try to come back in. Uh, oh, no, Rick, I can kind of hear you now. Uh, hey, what's up? All right, uh, I'm doing just fine, Rick. How are you? We're up to the discussion right now that we had last night during our Skype call when it pertains to who was going to accept the challenge for the United States Championship Open Challenge. I mean, there was a, a myriad of people that we were discussing in that Skype call. I mean, we went from Dolph Ziggler to to Sheamus, you know, because there was a lot of rumors out there that, you know, there was a distinct possibility of John Cena was going to drop the United States Championship to whoever it was going to be because of the fact that John Cena was supposedly supposed to have some time off. Well, I think that, well, he is supposed to be taking time off. Uh, that's pretty much been confirmed, uh, but I think he's supposed to take the time off after Hell in a Cell. So if anybody, if he's ever going to drop the title, that will be the ample time. As yeah, far- because- Go ahead, Curtis. Yeah, that'd be perfect, like Rick said. Um, hi, Rick, by the way. I'm Curtis. From hi, Rick. Um, I'm doing pretty good. Um, but I think, like like Rick said, I totally agree on what he said. Like, um, he should drop it off at Hell in a Cell. I don't know who he's person at Hell in a Cell right now. But if he's going to drop it at new one, in my choice, you're going to get mad. I says, I hope it's, I would have to say Big Show. Now, here's what happened last night, guys and gals, that pissed a lot of us off. You know, we heard Dolph Ziggler's music, and a lot of people wanted to see Dolph Ziggler just based on the, the storyline they're doing on, guess where? Total freaking divas on that show and you know we hear Dolph Ziggler's music we don't see Dolph Ziggler come out until he gets dragged out by the new day and who accepts the challenge big Rick one of the big questions um, I talked about last night with you guys is the fact that you know there was could be a distinct possibility of WWE overly hyping the open challenge to, to have just to have someone of a less than mid card status accept the challenge, and that's exactly in my mind what happened when Big E accepted that challenge. Well, you know, I can't say it's less than mid card right now. You know, they are tag team champions. They got that Freebird rule going around, which some people do kind of like, and uh, whether you like it or not, or whether you want to believe it or not. The New Day is starting to gain some momentum. Now, the only thing I wish they would drop is that goddamn trombone. Um, Big E, like him or not, again, he is a good worker. He's, you know, got the muscle. He's got the, you know, he just, he almost has the look of, of course, uh, Joe from uh, CWA, who hangs out with us at HWR, says he kind of looked like Big E Webster. Um, but uh, there's even been more rumors about, you know, NXT wrestlers taking the uh, U.S. Open Challenge because, quite frankly, Cena's gone through them all. Uh, as for the Dolph Ziggler rumor, uh, which was greatly speculated, like you said, Total Divas, I think it's not that I don't like the storyline. I feel that it was done in the wrong place. If they wanted to do something like that with that kind of an angle, they should have done a segment on Raw or SmackDown. Now, we did kind of get possibly the inception of the the, the angle between Dolph Ziggler and and John Cena, because uh, after the match was over, the New Day was beginning a beatdown of John Cena. Ziggler would go out there to, to attempt to save of John Cena, and when Ziggler went to throw the super kick, he mistakenly hit John Cena, and we could see an angle begin just out of that right there with Ziggler. And now we all know if they do, if, if if there's ever going to be turned, they're not going to turn John Cena heel out of that. If, if they're going to turn anyone, it's, it's more than likely going to be Dolph Ziggler. But yeah. then, again, but then again, you know they could have go face base versus face. You know, it, it it is a possibility of that happening. Uh, but but after that, the Dudleys would come out 
to attempt to make the save, but again, the numbers just not in their favor. And I, I, I recall something the studly man Ashley kept saying over and over again at the end of Monday Night Raw on Skype call is the fact that he, he currently liked the New Day gimmick, but in his personal opinion, the way the finish went, the, the, the New Day gimmick they, they originally had just went to trash, in a sense. Um, and, I, and I believe that was to the extent of what the stunning went nationally because I'm trying to, uh, you know, this ain't hardcore or some radio. I really don't want to kind of throw it out there, you know, because on here we like to try to technically analyze what's, uh, what happened on, on Monday Night Raw. And that's kind of, in a sense, uh, what the Studley man actually had to say. What the Studley man actually had to say. Would you agree with that, Rick? Um... He, I, again, as I said before, I mean, he pretty much, uh, I, I think what he was expecting was a finish from, you know, somebody from 3D or John Cena. And I think they kind of had to boost, again, um, New Day. They kind of had to put him a little bit over to promote that, now, you know, the pay-per-view that's coming up. Um, now, you know, it, it's just the way it is. And keep in mind... As much as 3D or the Dudley Boys, however you want to call them, they are legends. They will always be legends. But in my personal mind, I think they're there just to push the roster in the same aspect that Jericho has been pushing the roster. Doesn't get the win, but he's making the other guys look better. And honestly, that's what 3D should be doing. Overall score on Monday Night Raw this week, it's really not going to get that high of a mark because Monday Night Raw really hasn't been doing very well as of late in the past few weeks. So it's going to get... I want to say generously a three out of five. Uh, best match of the night is going to go to the six-man tag: Roman Reigns, Randy Orton, and Dean Ambrose taking on the Wyatt family. Again, it was a an energetic, exciting six-man tag for once in WWE, and that's something I really would like to see more of in the company. Is that was good, exciting, energetic, chaotic style of matches because those tend to be the most entertaining to watch. In, in WWE, so WWE Creative, take notice. We need more entertaining styles of segments and matches, just like what we had with the six-man tag. Uh, worst segment or worst match of the night? It's definitely going to go to the six people tag match, because I kind of equate to the feelings the Stunley Man Hash Ashley had in the Skype call, you know, with, with the frustration over where the Divas Revolution has gone and how far it's fallen from grace and of course when an additional dishonorable mention you know kind of get what i'm saying there dishonorable mention to the somewhat racial slur that nikki bella had for team bad uh, but um anyway guys and gals uh that's my thoughts on it uh rick over to you your raw scores and your picks for best and worst match or segment of monday night raw this week um, I, I got to give it a 2.5. Uh, over the past two or three weeks, Raw has just really taken a downward spiral. Um, a lot of the matches have been very, very predictable. Um, the six-man tag, as you mentioned, uh, had its nice spots. But, you know, again, I, I think they just... We're seeing too much of the same thing, and this, this feud really has to end. As far as the Divas Revolution... You know, it is getting stale, it is getting boring, but you know, when you only have used the same wrestlers and the same time, I don't care if they're male or female, it does get very stale. Paige herself said in an interview that the revolution is currently getting stale. And the problem is they're not splitting these ladies up and doing one on one. They should be having Sasha Banks and Naomi fight each other. They should be having, you know, um, Alicia Fox and Nikki or Brie Bella fighting each other. That's what they need to be doing. And the fact that they're bringing Paige into Team PCB as like a, a disgruntled uh, partner is just not working. Yeah, definitely. I, I have to agree with you on that one. Um, and Curtis, over to you. Your overall score and your picks for best and worst match or segment of Monday Night Raw this week. Um, I didn't really like any of the Raw, so I'd have to give it a, a two. Um... No offense to anyone that liked it or not, but um, the worst, worst would be the divas, divas match. Six divas match. Six tag. Sorry. Six. What was it again? Six tag six, match. Yeah, six. Uh, six divas tag match. I think divas tag. I just didn't like it whatsoever. Like I, I just hated it all. Like I think it's gonna stay. Like he said, Richard. I mean, Rick said it's gonna stale. 
I think they can improve on the Divas division. And um, best match would have to be the what was it, um, Kane, the D Corporated Kane, and Seth Rollins versus um, the Dudley Boys. I, I didn't like it whatsoever. I didn't like any match, but I would choose that as probably my favorite match this week. Anyway, guys and gals, what we want to know from you guys out there, the viewers and subscribers, your thoughts on Monday Night Raw this week. What are your overall scores? What are your picks for best and worst match or segment of Monday Night Raw this week? I definitely want to know what you guys out there have to say. Be sure to put your comments in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Rick, where can fans check you out on HWR? Rick. And as I sit on my microphone again, <laughs> uh, you can always find us over at Facebook.com slash Hardcore Wrestling Radio. But if you really want to sink your teeth in, and if you got something what you want to say, how you want to say it, get over to our chat room. That's Facebook.com slash HWR chat room. Not too hard to forget. And then also, please, take a few minutes. Subscribe to us over at YouTube.com slash HWR show. Tonight, we have our live digress wrestling digression show, which we call In The Moment. That's going to be 8.30 tonight, Eastern PM. And, of course, guys and gals, link to uh, Rick's channel is always in the description box below. Curtis is from the 5 Wrestling Reviews podcast. Curtis, where can they check you out? Hey, guys, you can check me out on Facebook under www.facebook.com slash 5 Wrestling Reviews. And um, you guys can look me up on YouTube, 5 Wrestling Reviews. And we'll be starting up a new podcast. Back in, we'll be starting the same podcast back up in November. That's all the cool. Tomorrow, guys and gals, I will attempt to preview... NXT take over, take over respect and give you guys my breakdown and predictions on each match tomorrow right here on WGS TV. Be sure you tune in for that as well. WGS TV can be found also on social media, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can ask me questions. Links will be provided as always, guys, in the description box below. And of course, guys and gals, you can, there will be a couple of videos in the annotations at the end of this video for you guys to check out as well. So with that being said, for the hardcore host of Hardcore Wrestling Radio, Rick Kett, and Curtis Cole from 5 Wrestling Reviews, I'm the Russell Gamer. Don't be a little Joe saying we'll see ya at the next Warp Zone. Back to where I was. What's wrong? I still hear my sister's laughter in the underbrush. Then the beast came for me. Sick my life. Oh, okay. If you guys saw that, you saw the 